Alright, so we're here at Makers with Nick and Jim Makers. Mm -hmm. Jim, how long have y'all had Makers? Uh, 1992. August of 92 we opened up here. August of 92. So then, when did you start this tradition with Wild and Velocity? I'm not sure the actual date, but when um, SMI bought the Speedway, Jerry Gappins was the general manager then, and probably two years after they bought it, him, his girlfriend at the time, Lucy, who we ended up marrying, and my brother and I were out to dinner, and we were talking about the trophies at the different NASCAR tracks. She says, they're all the same. Everything's like blended in. She said, can you get a big lobster, like a two-pounder? And we went, no, we can do better than that. We can get you a 20-pounder. You what, really? So that's how it started, because of the suggestion um, and brainstorming, uh, it became a tradition. We started off just doing one race, and we ended up doing two races because it was such a popular item. Uh, and uh, then, obviously, a few years back, the race, got, one of the races got moved out to Vegas, so now we're back to doing one, one time a year. Again. So, but it's been probably about nine years now. Okay, so in those nine years, so we have not, has it, have you had a repeat driver that succeeded? Oh no. yeah, yeah, there's been drivers, one, two or three of them. There's a lot of them that want to win them that haven't won them. And um, they'll actually, a lot of the drivers will come in and look at them in the tank, but they will not touch them because of superstition. But they want to see what the trophy looks like while it's in the tank. So, I, I know Diddy Hamlin had a big issue with Holding it. Some of them didn't. Some, don't like the, some of them don't like to hold it at all, <laughs> and it's been it's been pretty comical because at one I think I remember one race, uh, Jerry Gaffin's uh, stepdaughter um, was actually handing the lobster to the driver, and he like backed up and I said, "Come on, don't let a little twelve-year-old girl show you." Out. So he ended up taking the lobster. <laughs> okay, so then where do you? Because I was reading somewhere where you get them. And it's, is it off from the shores here? Is it from Canada? Or they, they, it's, it's usually, they're usually a couple hundred miles out and a couple hundred feet deep. Um, usually out by Georgia's banks, the big fishing ground out here. We don't get them through the lobster guys generally. I mean, they, they, they will come through a lobster broker because of licensing and stuff like that. But as far as uh, a lot of times they get in the stall guys trap. And if they have a license to take them, then they get them to us. So. We put our field results two or three months before the race, so it generally takes that long to get on that size. Okay, so then how is this guy determined? Where where did we make the decision like this is our guy? This well, this uh, this well, the biggest one we could get. And up to about a week ago, we only had a 14 pounder, and then um, we got a call last Wednesday. Said, hey, I got a 24. You want it? We went, we do. And we had to, on my way. We, 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 <laughs> we took off, went down to Boston, and, and got it from one of our suppliers down there and brought it back up. So, what is the biggest that you have ever had? This one, this one this year is probably pretty close to the biggest. I think 24, 25. This was pretty close to that. Okay, and then so what is the process once they win it? Because I asked Martin a couple weeks ago in our media availability. If, if he had received it, he says no, he was going to get it this week. So how does that work? You know this story? Yeah. The way it used to work is because we had two race races. The one in June would get cooked. After the race, we bring it back here, cook it. And then they, they pick it up. The taxidermist picks it up, takes it to the pot, takes the meat out. The meat is supposed to go to the crew. The other ones actually won the race about a long time. And then the trophy, he, he puts it back together, he mounts it. You know, as, as a taxidermist, and then that goes to the driver. So the June race lobster would go be prepared so that the, in September they'd get it, and then the September guy would wait till the next June to get his. So now this race now he will get that lobster from last year today or tomorrow whenever they present it to him. So if I take this, it's a, it's a rotation type thing. So. so he gets the actual. The mouth. The the as mouth. far as the meat, the how meat, does that the work? meat goes to the pit. Bull. They probably already ate it. It goes to the pit. Bull. Yeah. Oh. The pit bull. So there's a crew yeah. It's like yeah. set up like a big lazy man lobster and butter all steamed up, nice and hot. Okay. So I mean, it's a very unique 
trophy. It's, I guess, the only live trophy that I is think on so. It? I so, so, I mean, what is the reception? I mean, it's obviously a big deal. It's, it's, it's become very, very popular. I mean, uh, when we start a lot of, yeah, okay, okay, and then uh, now if I, if I go to like Daytona, to the Speedway in Daytona, people recognize me and say, oh, the other guy was a lobster. I was sitting at dinner um, it's one time, time, and the VP, the VP oh. of the NASCAR, oh, yeah, we, we, we started talking, and uh, so, yeah, from New Hampshire. He said, yeah, we go to a restaurant there in Macros. I go, that's my place. And he said, oh, you're a legend in NASCAR type thing. He said, so everybody knows about the lot. I was walking through the uh, through the garages in uh, Daytona for like two or three years, and I said, hey, lobster man. I turn over and look around, and it was Richard Petty. You know, so good. And then Richard Childress came, comes in here, and uh, Kyle Petty and Junior. So they all come in here and have dinner, so we get to know pretty much all, all of them through the year. So it's been a pretty good experience. So, I mean, you've, ha you've had this restaurant since 92. This tradition has been going. Where the, dri the drivers are coming in before the tradition, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it, because it is a place that's right down the street from the track. Yeah. Yeah. I have a signed shirt from Richard Petty every year since I was 14 years old. Like, he'd come in and sign our shirts ever, ever since. Except for that, I haven't seen him yet this year. I haven't seen him yet this year. Well, maybe he'll be in the next Hopefully, so. they come in tonight. Obviously, I would think it's good sponsorship and promotion for your business. Right? Oh, yeah, because no, it's been good for us. We do, you know, we have a, a good relationship with the track. You know, we go up, uh, we go above and beyond. I mean, we're, we go up there and we do the, like, the driver's meetings. We put them out on display. And then we'll do, you know, NBC or we'll do the Foxes up there, whatever, the stations up there. We'll do interviews with them, bring them off to go to the media center with the governors there. Um, and then we go up onto the hill uh, when Miller Coors was one of the sponsors put there in Budweiser. They've been loyal to us, so we'd go by their tents and, and bring them off. So that sometimes the driver would come to that event. Um, we just we, we bring it around. And the funniest thing is, over the last few years, and he can tell you that when we come up out of the tunnel, out of the track, so after, the, after the victory, there's 200 people waiting to see the lobster. So we'll grab that lobster and hold it up there. And they just, it's a roar of cheer. But we're the first year he made me do it, he didn't tell me it was going to happen. I'm sitting up and like all the people come out of the tunnel and you're holding the lobster. You know, you felt like you're like a rock band, like lead <laughs> singer or something. It was pretty cool. There's, you know, there's a lot of, and there's a lot of opportunity with marketing at the Speedway for that. And, you know, my concept was to create a bunch of little small trophies the actual driver that won that year that time so when we were a kid that was a fan they could buy a little small trophy of the big one you know or or make a t-shirt with a with their race car on it with a lobster holding the checkered flag out the window and stuff like that and they could do something like that and raise money for the children's uh, speedway charities because on the board of directors out there we'd like to raise money for a lot of good causes and they made a set cooler that goes on tv all day long uh, so last question is, do you guys have favorite drivers? Oh, we have a, I have a favorite driver. Okay, so <laughs> who is it and has they won, have they won the block for? Um, I, think, I think my favorite driver, just because he's a normal guy and he treats everybody like they're human, is uh, Kirk Wood, not Kirk Wood, Brad Kozlowski. Okay. And, Brad, Brad, Brad. Yeah, Brad, I like Brad. Brad's a good guy. We've been good friends with Brad for years. And the, you know, a younger kid, it's it funny because um, years ago, this guy came in today like a race car driver. And I, looked at, I looked at the guy and he was like, looked like he was like 12 years old. He was like, yeah, I think he was like 16 or 15. He was 15, I think, at the time. It was Greg Aldi, young kid. And he ended up eating a seven pound lobster. <laughs> and him and his family have been coming here every year since. So we become very good friends with those people, and, and uh, Gray does well. I don't think he's in the in the uh, in the race this weekend. But hopefully, he'll get back in there, get a good sponsor. And it's hard to beat these guys with a lot of money, you know. I always said I was going to make a bumper sticker that says "Speed is only a matter of money." <laughs> so, just lastly, the, the relationship with NASCAR has been something that Great. you guys have embraced, not only because you're down from the truck, but it's obviously become a part of your. Who you guys are? Oh, yeah. We look no. forward to this week every year. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's, it's a great, we got a good relationship. I mean, Dave McGrath and, and Lisa McGann up there, who's head of marketing, and Dave the president. Uh, we have good rapport with them. Uh, 
us to get in binds, if they get in broad binds, if they need you know, us to do media stuff on them, or TV interviews, or uh, we'll, we accommodate them and they accommodate us. So it's been a very good and, and uh, I'm sad to have Gruten go. Gruten is a dear friend of mine. He used to come in here every time, and, and Marcus has taken over doing a good job, and, and Marcus has become a good friend of ours, too. So they all realize, and they, they think this is an easy chore, but to get a big job for like this is, is you got to pull some strings. But we've been doing this for 40 years, so we know where to get them. <laughs>